All right, gamers. For this episode, we got lots of work to do, and you shall see what I mean. Hey, everybody! It's Double RPG here, and welcome to another episode of Double RPG. Let's play with Kingdom Hearts on the PlayStation 2. In today's episode, we are going to locate the remaining Trinity marks that are left within this game, and then uh, we will close off the episode by doing one of the optional boss fights, and that will be the end of that. But anyway, let's get on with this episode that's already in progress. And I'm not sure if I showed you this before, but with the white mushrooms, you can actually, you know, whatever emotions that they try to convey when they, you know, when they are, you know, you know, doing their emotions right in front of Sora, then you should hit them with the proper, uh, with the proper magic spell, and uh, they should, you know, be happy, and they will give you uh, MP balls, and sometimes they will give you items, some rare synthesis items, and some rare you know, proofs like the uh, Thunder Arts like that. So yeah, I just wanted to give you a uh, quick showing of that. I mean, if you do a spell uh, three times in a row, a certain spell three times in a row, then you should be able to get, you know, proof that you were able to do that on one of the white mushrooms. But anyway, let's get on with uh, locating the remaining Trinity Marks. Basically, the one blue Trinity Mark and the rest of the white ones. And we will find one of the white ones here in Wonderland. And it's here in the Lotus Forest, but you need to you know get to the spot like I showed you before by going through one of the paintings inside the bazaar room that's on the side and opening up that treasure chest that will give us the lady luck keyblade and uh, with that I think it's time for us to go look for the next training mark and I think it's in deep jungle yep here we are back in the waterfall cavern so um, since we're here at the waterfall cavern the place that we actually need to head to inside this place is in the cavern of hearts and that is where we will find the uh, white trinity mark. And it's located in front of where we found the keyhole when we came here. So let's go uh, Let's go ahead and head over there. And uh, let's use that white trinity mark. And we will get ourselves another, you know, trinity mark found. And what does that give us this time? I think that will give us an Orchalcum. Yes, it does. Indeed it does. Okay, so we're here. We're done here at Deep Jungle, so I think the next place we want to go to is Agrabah. Indeed, here we are back in Agrabah, and the place we want to go to is over at the entrance of the Cave of Wonders. Since we're inside the Cave of Wonders, but well, we need to head to the place where the entrance is. So, here we are. So, let's go ahead and take care of some of the Heartless that are going to run around here first, so that way we will have a safe clearing to you know, activate the white trinity mark. But don't worry, there's not a whole lot of these guys that will give us trouble, so let's go ahead and uh, head over there right now. Let's see what, you know, what holds beyond this trinity mark. Oh, it says that we can't carry any more Comet Gs, but we don't even need any, need any more of those items, so we'll just leave it at that. So, anyway, the next place we want to go to is Atlantica. Yep, here we are back at Atlantica. And the place we're at is at Triton's Palace. And where we will find the White Trinity Mark is inside the spiral shell structure. And it's on the floor of that. Hope we find something good. Hopefully so. And believe it or not, this is the only Trinity Mark that you will find here in Atlantica. So I thought I'd point that out for you all. Okay, we're done here. So let's head over to Monstro and get those two Trinity Marks that we're missing out on. Okay, the first Trinity Mark that we want to look for is the blue one, and we'll find that in the throat of Monstro. So we want to go up here, and we will go inside where the throat is. But of course, we're not going to get, you know, safe passage to the Trinity Mark, because there are some more Heartless that we can fight against. So let's go ahead and take care of the, you know, the small fry, and uh, we will uh, activate the Trinity Mark. And of course, if we try to jump any higher, more Heartless are going to pop up. Not cool, man. Not cool. Okay. Trinity jump this. And uh, I think we get a Mithril Shard and we get some money for our troubles. Which is nice. We could use some more money, but I'm not sure about Mithril Shards, but oh well. Anyway, let's go find the uh, White Trinity Mark in this place. Now, the place where we want to find the White Trinity Mark is actually in Chamber 6. And it's at the lower lying level of this place. So... We activate the Trinity here, and we tech a treasure chest. 
another treasure chest. We'll always detect treasure chests inside of the white training marks. But that will give us a Thundaga G. But we don't even need it. So let's go ahead and head over to Halloween Town. Okay, now this um, white training mark here is in the Moonlight Hill. And we're going to try to open it, but we can't even do anything because we're going to get interrupted by some Dark Balls. So, if you guys will just excuse me for about a minute or less, I will take care of these guys and we can open that treasure chest to see what all holds inside of it. Yeah, and you know, I like the, the color scheme for the Dark Balls in Halloween Town. They look awesome with all that black and gray. Oh, it's another Comet G. Another piece of crap we don't need. So anyway, let's go to Neverland. Okay, here we are at Neverland, and we're on the deck, and the place where we want to find the white trinity mark is on the poop deck. Yeah, I know, right? But, of course we're not going to be able to get the, uh, you know, the trinity mark, because we are going to be interrupted by some, uh, by some, uh, blue, uh, mad truffles. But oh well. Okay, guys, this is the last Trinity Mark that's within the game, so we have finally found all of them. All 10 whites, all 17 blues, all 6 reds, all 4 greens, and all 9 yellows. No, all 9 greens and all 4 yellows. Okay, guys, now I'm back here at uh, Traverse Town because I wanted to show you some of the... Uh, uh, some of the uh, stuff that we can some of the other stuff that we can synthesize, you know, since we're you know We're in the process of collecting more rare items and uh, Like I said if you uh, if you create all 24 items that are in the synthesis shop Then the item synthesis shop then that will be able to allow you to get access to uh, synthesize Sora's uh, best weapon in the game called Ultima weapon and uh, it's a very nifty device. I mean, a very nifty weapon. And it looks pretty cool. So yeah, I'm going to take this time to grind a lot and locate the rest of the treasures. And then I will get Sora's best keyblade since we can sy synthesize it here. So anyway, guys, I will be back much later. But I will time lapse to where, you know, I will have it. And uh, we will take care of one other special thing before we close off this episode. So I'll be back in a bit, guys. And of course, by a bit, I mean by a few days. But uh, anyway, yes, as you can tell, I have the Ultima Weapon right now. And Sora is at level 75, you know, for his stats at the moment. So yes, I did some grinding and I found the rest of the uh, synthesis items. And now we have, um, you know, uh, synthesized all of them. And then we synthesized the Ultima Weapon for Sora. So yes, the first rendition of Ultima Weapon is here for our main character. And of course, there is a different rendition of Ultima Weapon in Kingdom Hearts 2, but for now, this is the first rendition. And as you can tell, what I'm doing right now, I'm just pretty much setting my uh, abilities because we're going to do one of the optional boss fights. But don't, but, uh, you know, don't even try to think that we are going to the optional boss fight, the one that you want to see me do as of yet, because we will actually do that in the next episode. But for... Uh, but for this episode, we're, at, we're actually going to take care of the ones that we can do since we're at a really good level to where we can fight against it. And that is the Hades Cup right there, but uh, it's empty. That actually uh, did contain an item, so... Uh, or, or that's actually just some random uh, jar. I think the Hades Cup is inside the, uh, inside of the uh, uh, lobby or the vestibule or whatever. Okay, uh, is it on the other side? Well, there's the Phil Cup, there's the Pegasus Cup, and then the other side we have the, yep, we have the Hercules Cup, and then we have the Hades Cup. So we won all four championships, so that's some, uh, those are indeed some really good uh, feats that we've put on for this Let's Play so far. Okay, so we are going to do this mysterious cup, or this mysterious match that is covered in question marks. This is actually the gold match that we're doing here and basically when you go to matches that have you know these two different type of matches that are really high with the uh you know the uh material or the uh or whatever it is the uh the periodic table count of the type of metal then yes we are fighting an optional boss and as you can tell the optional boss we're fighting against is ice titan and uh this guy is pretty tough but if you know what you you know, if you know what you do in this boss fight, then you should be fine. 
And I'm going to tell you this right now, that defense is sometimes the best offense. And what I mean is, is that the Ice Titan will constantly summon uh, these, uh, these icicles right at you to lose some of your hit points. But when he does that, you want to use the uh, guard ability so that way you can guard against them. And you can have them ricochet back towards the Ice Titan to do a lot of damage. And you want to constantly keep doing this in the whole fight as well as watching out for the, you know, the, you know, the ice coming out of the ground there and uh, whatever other traps that are, you know, coming, that are present. And, uh, and as you can tell, every time when you do guard against an icicle, you know, that he chucks at you, then you will be able to get 24 points, uh, uh, 24 experience points of technical parries or whatever. Yeah, it's a good way to build up a lot of experience that way, but, uh, but when, uh, when Ice Titan is down for the count, sometimes you want to use the Ragnarok ability because you'll actually do a, you know, you'll actually do a lot of, uh, swings towards the enemy to where you can actually do quite a bit of damage, but, uh, you want to be careful because when he gets back up, he's going to be trying to do a lot more damage than what is already going on at the moment. And when you take enough HP, or when you take down enough of its HP, then it will start doing some stronger and more deadlier attacks to try to throw you off guard. And uh, don't worry, as long as you, uh, you know, remain focused and keep focused on your, uh, on your, uh, you know, on your hit, hit point gauge and your magic point gauge, then you should be fine. And, uh, and as you can tell, the, uh, and you probably hear that, that's my, uh, English Bulldog that just came out of nowhere and she is all happy and excited. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it just came by to say hello, but, uh, or I'm not even sure if you can actually hear it, but... Anyway, uh, I, I apologize, but back on topic here. Um, as you can tell, the Ice Titan can actually summon ice and can try to freeze the ground from, you know, by blowing ice out of its mouth. And sometimes it can actually make Sora slip down. But don't worry, you do not lose any money by doing this like you did with the female Power Wilds. And, uh, or whatever their technical names are in the game. And, uh, yeah, uh, you are actually safe from, you know, slipping, you know, slipping on the ice from this guy. But don't worry, we're gonna do fine. But yeah, watch out for those uh, huge chunk of ice that he summons down right above you. So uh, yeah, so nothing more to this boss fight except you know just be careful and watch your hit point gauge and make sure that uh, you get this guy. Uh, you know, make sure you do a lot of damage to this guy by keep defending yourself against the uh, icicles, and you should you know come out on top. Come on! Get unconscious! And as you can tell, this boss has 1,500 hit points, so... Not the biggest amount in this game, but, you know... Still quite a hefty amount. Let's use Ragnarok on it. Okay, here we go. So, yeah, as you can tell... Actually, it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. I was quite wrong. Or maybe I'm not doing anything right, but, uh, anyway... So, uh, let's focus on getting done with this, you know, again, and, uh, I think we're close to depleting half of Ice Titan's hit points. And I think we already did so right now, so, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, finish up the other half of this boss fight, and then Ice Titan should be down for the count. So, yeah, if you think this boss is easy, it's anything but easy. So, uh, that's why I made sure I grinded Sora, or leveled up Sora to 75 at least, so that way I can try to fight against the Ice Titan without any problems. And don't worry, we will get through this boss fight and I will not die whatsoever. And But I will tell you this right now, is that um, you actually do not get any... You do not get anything special for defeating the Ice Titan, you know, after you defeat it. So it's not like, you know, you're fighting in one of the tournament cups. So yeah, that's uh, that really kind of sucks that you don't actually get anything from this guy when you should get something from it. And, uh, let's go ahead and continuously damage the, uh, guy to death. And, uh, it... And you can actually defeat this guy if you guard against the icicles coming at you when it's low on, uh, hit points. So, yeah, that's another way you can defeat it, aside from just the Keyblade. Okay, now, uh, the Ice Titan did use a new move on us, and where he, uh, you know, started to, uh, you know, hit, you know, try to, uh, you know, 
summon this mist around the area where we were, and that can actually freeze Sora uh, at numerous times and make him lose some hit points. You know, just like that. It's summoning ice and making us lose hit points quite a lot. So, yeah, you're going to have to be careful when dealing with that. So make sure you stay away from the Ice Titan when it summons that mist towards you. Okay, let's just uh, focus on getting this done because this is already going on longer than I expected it to be. And that's mostly the case for these optional boss fights is that they actually do go on longer than they usually do. Well, it, especially if you fight against, fought against somebody like, uh, you know, the, the Enigmatic Soldier or the, magnetic, the Enigmatic Knight in... Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix Plus, you know who I'm talking about. And that guy can prove to be quite a doozy too, so, uh... But at least, you know, for these bosses, they're really not all that bad. Even though these optional bosses do take some time to get, you know, take some time to finish off, but at least for the most part, you know, they're alright. Okay, we should almost uh, have this guy defeated. There we go. We have officially defeated the Ice Titan, and we got 5,000 experience points for that, including all the uh, technical parries that we did to gain us, or to give us those uh, extra experience points that we needed. And what is happening to the Ice Titan? Is it getting bigger, or is it getting smaller? It's trying to stop us, but, uh... His leg broke off. <laughs> oh, that's not cool. Oh my gosh, the Ice Titan shrunk. So yes, the Ice Titan is just a small little munchkin, or a small little critter. Oh well, we have defeated it. So yes, that is all what we are doing in this episode today, so let's go ahead and wrap up things here. So next time on Double RPG, let's play with Kingdom Hearts on the PlayStation 2. We're actually going to do a couple more optional boss fights. And uh, one of them is the one that you guys actually want me to do. Now, I decided to not do the, um, you know, the Hades Cup solo or, you know, in the time limit. But I will show you a little bit of footage, you know, of what you get after you completed those tournaments. You know, either solo or the time limit for the Hades Cup. But they actually do give you Donald and Goofy's ultimate weapons in this game. But yeah, I'll show a little bit of those and then we will uh, close off the episode from there. But anyway, guys. If you have not done so already, be sure to follow me on Facebook and Twitter with the links in the description. And if you like what you saw, then be sure to rate this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave comments below to let me know you, what you guys thought of this episode. Anyway, gamers, take care of yourselves, and I shall see you on the next episode. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys then.